Effect of Aging, Session 3. The aim of the session is to discuss the psychological, social, nutrition and hydration considerations of exercise participation for older people in all environments. I will be using the term mental instead of psychological throughout the session and I will be referring to mental health, uh, mental well-being as opposed to mental ill health. We will discuss a little about nutrition as it pertains to older people and again I am assuming previous knowledge as in all the other sessions. At the end of this session you will be able to develop and apply strategies to motivate older people, to develop and apply strategies to encourage adherence to an exercise program and you will be able to create a fun and enjoyable session for participants in an exercise session. As fitness professionals, the onus is on you to find the key to motivating and inspiring the older person to begin and to continue exercising. In my opinion, the way to do that is to make it fun and enjoyable. By the end of the session, you'll be able to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the psychological and social barriers specific to older adults, the importance of building rapport with older adult clients, the importance of social interaction in the exercise programming and the increased responsibility and duty of care while working with vulnerable clients. Designing a program which incorporates all the dimensions of wellness is one of the keys to successful programming. We will discuss these dimensions later. The notion of healthy aging also includes autonomy. This is the right to self-determination and it is an essential aspect of human dignity and integrity. By the end of the session you will be able to understand the impact, impact that nutrition can have on exercise capacity and safety. You will be able to know the common nutritional deficiencies associated with this age group and communicate the importance of adequate hydration within exercise sessions. Again. Previous learning is essential to this session, but there are a few things that are particular to this population and we will be discussing them in detail at the end of the session. Glossary of terms, psychological or mental aspects, social aspects, wellness, adherence, motivation, exercise enhancers, self-efficacy and nutrition and hydration. These terms will appear throughout the session and will be discussed in detail. The American Journal of Health Promotion say that successful aging is low risk of disease and disease related disability, high mental and physical function and active engagement with life. In the first session we dis discussed the age related diseases and the risk fa factors associated with them. We talked about disability in session two and how it need not limit a person from doing some form of physical activity, even if it is just throwing and catching a ball. This session will be concentrating on the social and mental stimulation that all of us, regardless of age, need to engage with throughout our whole lives. Successful aging is largely determined by individual lifestyle choices in self-efficacy, diet, exercise, pursuit of mental challenges and involvement with other people. Well, self-efficacy, it is so important to speak to the older person in a language that they understand so that they will be self-sufficient. That's really what it means. And you want them to be self-sufficient in terms of taking what you tell them on board and being able to carry on for themselves. When we talk about diets now, I don't mean that you're going to be able to give your participants diets, unless of course you are nutritionists or dietitians. Remember, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Good advice for exercise related nutrition is okay. And as I said at the beginning, we'll discuss this later on in the session. Mental challenges and social involvement is what this session really is all about. Well, social connectedness, that means Isolation, actual or perceived, is a powerful risk factor for poor health. The more older people participate in social relationships, the better their overall health. 
Isolation is a lack of social contact with other people. Retirement from work is associated with feelings of isolation. Bereavement is also a key contributor to feelings of isolation. And a good way of overcoming these feelings is to become involved in community activities. About mental health. Mental health is something we all have. It can be good, at times it can be bad. We should try to look after it in the same way that we look after our physical health. When we are mentally healthy, we can enjoy all aspects of our life and relationships more. Good mental health allows us to get the most out of our life and it gets us through the difficult times. Maintaining a high function, a mental function means regular physical activity, a good strong social support system, education and lifelong learning, and a belief in one's ability to handle what life has to offer. Again, that word, self-efficacy. Mental functioning in later life is complex though, and different studies show different results, depending on what element of function was being researched. But being involved in an environment that is familiar, complex, stimulating, can help preserve intellectual functioning in old age. The World Health Organization say that health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. This statement, believe it or not, was made by the World Health Organization at the start of their very first conference in 1946. It is still as relevant today as it was then. I need you to get out your pens now because there's a task coming up. Now, the task. A HEPA session is three dimensional. If you were to score yourself from one to ten, ten being the highest, where would you come in the three categories? Now, HEPA, if you remember from the last session, is health enhancing physical activity. So a HEPA session is three dimensional. If you were to score yourself from one to 10 in the physical, mental, and social scale, where would you come in the three categories? Well, did you get 10 out of 10? Well, in the physical domain, maybe, but mentally and socially, I don't think so. You can imagine then how it must be for an older, frailer person and how hard it must be to achieve an acceptable level of health in all of these categories. So the IDEA Fitness Journal say health is wealth. I have actually said your health is your wealth in the last session. But if you take moments to enjoy life Taking moments to enjoy life can help you make positive health decisions. This of course applies to everyone, but when people are feeling unwell a lot of the time, as older people often are, it can be a challenge to take steps to becoming fitter and therefore healthier. That is why it is necessary for fitness professionals to make it as easy as possible for this population to take these steps and make a commitment to remaining healthy and fit as long as they live. In promoting health, the key challenges are overcoming barriers to participation, example, as we said, social isolation, mental ill health, or chronic disease. One of the other key challenges are ensuring that the increase in life, the length of life, is matched by increased years of health, and recognizing the value and potential contribution older people can make to society. If you remember in the first session, I said physical activity lifts the lid, L-I-D, loneliness, isolation, and depression. So if you find someone in your class who appears not to be too interested in the actual goals that you have set, don't worry, they are probably there for the social element, and there's nothing wrong with that. Your goal is to make it so enjoyable and fun that they keep coming back. Wellness. Wellness is the key to increased participation. It is moving from reliance to self-responsibility, dependence to independence, reactionary response to proactive approach, 
health as a negative state to a positive state. It's moving from what's wrong to what's right. In my experience, a lot of older people, and particularly the oldest old, hand you their life as soon as you walk in the door. Being responsible for your own mind and body and health is the first principle of self-sufficiency and rising above things. Don't be afraid to hand their life right back, as in fact older people probably know a lot more and have certainly experienced a lot more than you and therefore are well capable of taking care of themselves. We all know the six dimensions of wellness, uh, physical, social, mental, spiritual, occupational and emotional. But when we're looking at it from an older person's point of view, and we discussed this before, physical equals functional fitness, social, new friendships, mental, new challenges, spiritual, mind, body and spirit, occupational, their interests, their hobbies, emotional, laughter, joy and optimism. You know, we discussed all this before, the social and the mental and the spiritual. It doesn't necessarily mean religion, which older people practice as a matter of course. The mind-body concept, as in yoga, etc., is a new concept for them. Uh, keeping busy doing crosswords, having a hobby or an interest, that's really good occupational thing for uh, older people. It keeps them really mentally alert and, and interested in it. Joining a group of like-minded people in the community or the leisure centre is a great way to keep occupied. And the last one, emotional. Find appropriate ways of expressing your feelings. Pent up emotions. Drain your, your energy. Let yourself go. You know, let, let them feel that they can let themselves go. Um, feelings need physical expression and often older people are reared with the notion that it's somehow rude that they are told as children that they should be seen and not heard and that they really don't know how to express themselves in that way. So it's great to get a bit of laughter, get a bit of fun and out of the session. But wellness is relative. Age, chronic illness, terminal illness, physical or mental disability need not limit the level of wellness one can reach. The level of wellness is always relative to one's own potential. And we have the potential however long we live, no matter how incapacitated we are, to live life to the best we can. And that's all anybody can be asked to do. Wellness is more than fitness and health promotion. It is a whole person health model. The concept of wellness, that wellness is holistic, is quite new. Um, it's about the last 10 years or so and fitness professionals are really just waking up to the idea as well. So the older person will find the fact that there's more to exercise than sweat and tears really revolutionary. Personal wellness then is self-responsibility for health, optimism, being in the moment, having a good attitude and having a holistic approach. This is across the board, young and old of course. Stop and smell the roses now and again. Life is far too fast and it's hard enough. So give yourselves a break. Working with this population can be the most rewarding job there is. You'll get far more satisfaction job-wise from working with this population than you could ever have imagined. Now there's another question coming up. Question. Which of the following is not a component of a comprehensive wellness program? A. Policies and environments that support healthy behaviours. B. Participation incentive programmes. C. Exemptions for older people with chronic disease. And D. Behavioural change programmes. Answer C. Exemptions for older people with chronic disease. Of course that's the answer. Did you get it? These older people need to be included in a wellness program, more so than the fitter younger adult. Incorporating the social and mental as well as the physical elements is very, very important to well-being. We'll move on to adherence. 
Um, getting people to stick with the programme is one of the hardest things you're going to do. Understanding what makes older people tick is a good place to start. Adherence. Adoption of and adherence to regular physical activity is a multifaceted problem at every age. The importance of physical activity to the older adult is matched by a growing number of real and perceived barriers. There are many reasons why people don't take enough physical activity, and they're not all spurious reasons. I know I keep saying, make it fun, but it is a very serious business, so keeping it light is good, provided you understand that there are genuine barriers to uh, this pa uh, participate, uh, to their participation, sorry. So we will look at them. The, d the determinants of, physical, of participation in physical activity can be categorized as personal characteristics and attributes, environmental factors, and the characteristics of the physical or the physical activity or exercise program. I will discuss these in more detail. Let's look at the personal characteristics and uh, attributes. Health status, lower social and economic status, lower education, and advancing years. Obviously, a person's health will have a will be a barrier, particularly if they are seriously unwell. Older people who are in the lower social and economic strata can view exercise as something they don't need in their life. Whether it is because they may not have been educated mostly to the benefits of, of uh, physical activity and have had to work hard all their lives to keep their heads above water or just don't see the need to spend money they haven't got. The very old person can just want to be left alone and are content to sit there and watch t TV all day long. Your job is to get around that and promote the idea that gentle exercise is really good for them. Adherence again. Environmental factors. Both indoor and outdoor environments affect the ability of the older person to stay active. To ensure adherence to exercise, it must be accessible, available, appropriate and affordable. So accessible, what do I mean? Lack of private or public transport. Available, the location and the timing of the classes. It must be appropriate, safe, effective and meet their needs. And it must be affordable, it must be realistic, it must have realistic costs, maybe discounts and incentives, etc. The characteristics of a physical activity or exercise program, does it include social, mental as well as physical activity in the session? Does it include all the health related components of physical fitness? Does it include interventions or advice by other health professionals? Does it include an element of fun? As I said, older people are very loyal provided that you cater to their needs, not yours. You need to hide the fact almost that you're exercising them and make it so enjoyable that they can't wait to go at it again. Vary the sessions with talks on diet and nutrition or give out leaflets from different relevant associations, example the Irish Heart Foundation or something like that, and above all include a bit of fun and laughter. How to motivate them then? Well motivation is very hard to uh, discuss, but uh, motivation is the skill to persuade others to begin and persist with a certain course of action. This is where you as professionals come in. If you have cracked this skill, you're on the right road, or put it another way. Motivation is the art of persuading people to go to hell in a way that they look forward to the journey. So how do we motivate older people to move towards health and well-being? Well, we'll use an alternative approach. Multi-stations, functional fitness stations, wellness walks, mind, body and spirit programs. Developing effective methods to help aging adults achieve optimal wellness is one of the utmost importance. If we don't do something now, then the cost of healthcare will be staggering and this will affect all of us. We will look at these few suggestions more closely. Let's look at multi-stations. You know, it's the first station could be set up in a circuit but designed to respond to the needs of individuals at different levels of wellness 
example, social, mental activities, exercise to improve daily living, uh, maybe quizzes to, that you have to answer before you can move on to the next station. And the second station could be partnered game of throwing or tossing an object into a target, etc. Then the, the functional fitness station could be set up in a course or a circuit designed to improve some aspect of fitness. Example, strength and balance activities. Uh, you could use dynabands there, or lifting light weights, or stepping up and down on a step, a rebut step, etc. It isn't actually rocket science. Wellness walks. Now this can take place indoors or outdoors, uh, weather permitting. Have a plan prepared to include treasure hunts, quizzes, something to ask them on their walk, like, you know, name the trees or the flowers or something that is of interest to them. Um, mind and body spirit programs could be yoga, pilates, stretching, relaxation and use of integrative therapies such as massage. And as I mentioned earlier, stopping to smell the roses is not a bad thing where older people are concerned. Having a bit of humour really adds a dimension that is very acceptable to them. Life's too short, literally, and doing something like this is thinking outside the box and can be done alongside the traditional group classes. This concept significantly broadens a facility spectrum of programme offerings without causing too much increase in costs. More older people, more profit. We said that earlier. And if you're working in a care setting or a day hospital, there are very long corridors. So there's no excuse. You can get them walking. I always say, get smart. Set, modest, achievable, realistic targets. Don't browbeat your participants trying to get a quick result. It takes time to change a habit, which could be a possible lifetime habit. So try and set reasonable, achievable goals. For this group of adults, the accomplish accomplishment of even the smallest goals enhances their self-sufficiency and thus quality of life. I'd like you to pause. I'd like you to just get ready for another task. The task comes in two questions. First question. List three possible reasons an older adult may choose to exercise. Second question. Give three examples of ways in which you could encourage adherence to the program. Answers. To question one, you could get them, they might want to improve activities of daily living, to improve their health, their social and mental wellness, or their functional fitness. To question two, if you make it accessible, affordable, appropriate, available, if you apply the SMART principle, if you make it safe, effective, fun and enjoyable. So how many reasons did you get? Nobody will stay with the programme if they don't enjoy it, remember that.